Yes, yeah. When you think of 90s gaming, nothing invokes imagery quite like Doom for PC. If you felt you'd outgrown stuff like Mario and Sonic, and were already bored with the one-dimensional Mortal Kombat games, then Doom was your go-to game. It took the rock-solid keyboard and mouse mechanics and map exploration of Wolfenstein 3D and made it as gory and brutal as possible. And I'm not just talking about the dead bodies and the bloodshed, either. The first time you played Doom, you didn't just play it, you survived it. It was tough, and it kept you on your toes. The face at the bottom of the screen was usually an accurate reflection of how you felt while playing it. Or at least it was for me. That's a normal Sunday morning for me right there. Oof. Anyway, Doom was obviously a huge hit on PC, so when Williams brought it over to the mighty Super Nintendo in 1995, I was fired up. Hey, one of my favorite games on my favorite system, bring it on. So you turn it on, get it started, and... What the hell am I looking at? Are those enemy soldiers? Seriously? What is this, Atari? Is that an imp? Holy crap, how did that get to me so fast? Yeah, you'll notice right away, there's a gigantic delay between when you press the directional pad to move and when you actually move. That's, uh kind of a major problem. If you play this, you will immediately realize that there is a gigantic difference between Doom on PC and Doom for Super Nintendo. This game feels like 100 pounds of ground beef being squeezed through a 1 inch meat grinder. It's so slow! Not only that, you get stuck on walls too, it's like a precursor to Superman 64. Come on dude, move it! Come on! The smaller screen resolution is a big letdown too, they did the same kind of thing out of necessity in Star Fox as well, but that game is light years faster and smoother than Doom, and that's saying something. Seriously, the amount of real estate available on the screen is kind of jarring. There's also a sizable imbalance between enemy projectiles and how quickly you're able to move. You can strafe left and right with the L and R buttons, which is a nice touch, but it doesn't make you move any quicker and the hit detection and damage is pretty wonky. What? Really? That brings me down to 30%? Whatever. Doom for Super Nintendo does do a couple things right though. This game is a hell of a soundtrack, no pun intended. The music sounds freaking great in typical Super Nintendo fashion, and the select button brings up the map on which you can still move around. That's unexpected and kind of impressive actually. But that doesn't change the fact that playing Doom for Super Nintendo is like driving a Ferrari underwater. I just wanted to make this video as a warning. I understand the appeal on the surface if you're younger and you weren't around when Doom first showed up. And you should play Doom because it remains a great game, but don't play it on Super Nintendo and not Sega Genesis either with that 32X nonsense. Get out of here with that. Don't be fooled by the flashy red cartridge either. If you really need a red cart for your collection, go with Maximum Carnage. That's a way better game anyway. And stay away from Doom on Super Nintendo, but there's absolutely no reason not to go get it on Steam instead.